of those who would, who would claim the existence of God. If you'd like to get into that as well, which I know is philosophy and theology, which is not your venue either, I'd be happy to do so. It is very different to happen to be an atheist and to do things in the name of atheism. I don't believe that anybody has done terrible disease deeds in the name of atheism. Why would they? What would be the point? Stalin did terrible deeds in the name of a communist utopia. Hitler did terrible deeds in the name of a racist utopia. Dystopia, one should say. Neither of them were representing atheism. Atheism is not responsible for anything that they do. Religion was responsible for what the Spanish Inquisition did, not modern religious people, but religious people at the time. Right. Uh, Father okay. Martin, you, in Rome, yeah. stay, stay with us just for a moment. I want to bring in uh, Trish Devine calling from uh, France. Uh, what would you like to say on, on this particular issue, on, on the encyclical issue by the Pope to do with atheism and, and how it plays into this debate? Well, I do think he's speaking up to nonsense. I absolutely agree with Professor Dawkins. Uh, it's not as if atheism itself is actually a movement. You know, atheists don't believe in God the way they don't believe in many other things, like the Loch Ness Monster. But we don't have a name for people who don't believe in the Loch Ness Monster. Um, Stalin indeed was an atheist, but Hitler was a Catholic. And most of the Nazis who carried out those terrible deeds under the National Socialist Program were themselves practicing Christians. I also believe that because Hitler was brought up in a Christian background, this is one of the reasons that he hated Jews so much because this was always part of the church's teaching. So what would, what would you say then, Trish Devine, about, if you like, religion's influence in the world? I think religions can uh, be, be influential for good, but they can also be very influential for bad. And only today, in today's Observer, we have a story about evangelical Christianity causing uh, people in Nigeria to attack their children as witches. Uh, let's go back to you then, Father Morris, in Rome. Uh, sure, Richard Dawkins, sure. uh, not alone in his arguments. <laughs> right, not alone, exactly. You know what's, what's great about uh, Catholic doctrine and Christian doctrine as well, I would say in general, is we can go back and find out what did the founder of Christianity say? And what do the leaders right now of Christianity say about violence in the name of religion? In true religion, and here I don't stand up for all religions, there's plenty of religions I wouldn't want my little sister being, to be involved in, but in true religion, we can go back and say, what does Jesus Christ say about violence in his name? He was the Prince of Peace. What does the Pope, Pope Benedict XVI, what did Martin Luther King? And then let me just say, to call Hitler, to call Stalin, practicing Christians, is absolutely ridiculous. You don't wipe out something that you adhere to. It's just not intellectually honest. So, uh, Trish Devine then and, and Richard Dawkins, to build on that point perhaps, uh, are you both in fact uh, tarring all religion, if you like, with the brush of bad religion? I am not. Sorry. Uh, Trish Devine? Uh, well, um, I, I don't go quite as far as Professor Dawkins. I have read his work. Um, I don't tend to think that uh, moderate Christians have been under the wedge. But I do think that there is a polarization in world religion at the moment, which is extremely dangerous. It's dangerous both on the Islamic side and dangerous on the evangelical Christian side, because anybody who takes a literal reading of the, the Bible, excuse me, to be accurate, um, I think is probably quite dangerous. The, the Bible, for instance, does say, "Thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And this is one of the things that is currently being quoted at Nigerian mothers. Uh, for instance, if a little boy dies in a family, a little girl can be accused of being a witch. Okay, let's just get, get Richard Dawkins. I have, no, well. I have no desire to tar uh, religious people with the evils that have been done in the name of religion. It was the father who brought that up. It was the Pope who said that Stalin and Hitler did terrible deeds in the name of, of atheism. I am perfectly happy to say there are very many good Christians, good, good Muslims. I do not wish to tar anybody with the brush of anything. It was the Pope who chose to call... Hitler and Stalin, atheists, atheists, and to say that they did things in the name of atheism. That, is, that was the towering that was done. I was simply responding to that. Okay. Uh, Father Morris, thanks very much indeed, and uh, Trish Devine as well. Uh, let me just read to you uh, an email that's come in while we've been on air from uh, Richard Harris in, in London. As science and reason continue to peel back layers of truth and religion as an answer becomes more obviously wrong, can you envisage a future world in which we wonder why any of us ever believed in God. Richard Dawkins? Obviously, I hope to look forward to such a world. 
Uh, and uh, my only disappointment is that we haven't apparently reached that stage yet, because it seems to me we ought to have done. Um, but yes, of course, I do hope for that. And uh, another email, uh, this one from David Thomas in Wales. Professor Dawkins, I teach my children about Jesus Christ. I teach them he is the Son of God and they believe in him and, do, and if they believe in him and do his teachings, they will go to heaven. Am I, David Thomas asked, a child abuser? Because you have said that you're worried well, about what you, you see as the indoctrination of children in, in uh, religious families. The, 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 the first thing I'd say is why do you teach your children about Jesus being the Son of God? Why don't you teach your children about Mohammed and his winged horse? The answer is that you were brought up uh, as Christian and not Muslim. Why don't you teach your children about Lord Shiva? Uh, the answer is you were not brought up Hindu. So it is arbitrary which religion you were brought up in. Now, there's a myth going about that I have said that all religious teaching is child abuse, and I have not said that. What I have said is that labelling children with the religion of their parents, saying to a child, you are a Christian child, is a form of child abuse. What I would prefer you to say is, there are lots of religions in the world, the Christians believe this, the Muslims believe that, the Hindus believe the other, uh, and when you're old enough, you can take your pick as to which, if any, religion you want to follow. There is one other thing that I think is child abuse, and that is frightening children, to, uh, frightening children out of their wits by teaching them about hellfire. And I trust and believe that you don't do that. Well, on this same issue, let's bring in our next caller, Louisa, in Cambridge. Your, your question to uh, Professor Dawkins. Good afternoon, Professor Dawkins. Um, as an RE teacher at secondary school in Cambridgeshire, I believe it is very important that people are able to make up their own minds about their faith and beliefs. Um, I was just wondering if you agree with this and why you do or why not. I strongly agree that people should make up their own minds. In particular, as I said in answer to the last question, children should not be told what religion they belong to. By all means, let's teach children about all uh, available religions in a comparative way. And the history of religion, you can't ob obviously understand history at all unless you go into religion. You can't take your illusions in English literature unless you know about at least the Christian religion and also, by the way, the ancient Greek and Roman religions. But the children should be free to make up their own minds and so should we all. And my book is an endeavour to help people to make up their own minds. I hope they'll read my book along with Christian books, Muslim books, Jewish books, etc. Louisa, if I can ask you, what do you teach about atheism? Um, well, we try to cover a range of different things. Um, I use Professor Dawkins' program, The Root of All Evil, as a very interesting um, source. And we obviously try to give a very um, non-biased kind of um, approach to the issue of, of atheism so that people are able to make their own minds up. What concerns me is I wonder whether Professor Dawkins believes that um, there is any future for our e-teachers um, if we are indeed teaching perhaps delusional material. Oh, no, I, I think there is a future because you are teaching something that's Im immensely important for the understanding of history and literature. And also I think that modern RE teaching doesn't just teach religion but teaches ethics and philosophy and sort of civics generally. So I'm sure there is a future for RE teachers, yes. So Professor Dawkins, would you prefer it um, that the society, as you mentioned earlier, was um, more religion free and therefore perhaps there is no longer a place for religion to be taught? Well, no, I, as I said, I do think it's important to, to teach comparative religion, which I think you probably do, yeah. uh, because you can't, uh, it's, to, it's a part of history. If you look back at history, so many of the wars of European history, for example, almost all of them actually, uh, in, until the 20th century, have been about, about religion. So you couldn't begin to understand.